cuddle fish wanna cuddle your face off. Hey everybody, it's uh, me, Super Paul Games, and welcome to uh, brand new Let's Play Our Personal Space. Won't you give me my personal space? It's a hot rocket of love coming straight to your nether regions. Uh, let's play a new game. I thought I knew what love was. It was a sticky feeling, kind of like honey. Delicious in your mouth, and it was a little bit made out of bee puke. That's what honey kind of is. Uh, smiling ridiculously whenever I thought of him. Oh, I'm a woman, apparently. Counting down the minutes until we would meet again. One, he'll be done po pooping in one minute and I will see him again. My heart beating faster when we kissed. Dup, 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 dup. That's a realistic heart sound I made. I got it off of heartsounds.com. I didn't make it up just now with my mouth hole. That feeling of contentment when he held me in his arms. Don't ever let me go. That's what I thought love was. I was so mother humping wrong. Oh, I love these stars. We love you, Super Paul. We've been watching you from space. <laughs> Will you ever beat Mountain Blade? I don't know. But you know what? That's why I married him. What's his name? His name is... Uh-oh. Is that Illuminati there? Freemasons rule the world. Uh, his name is Jack Off. I thought we were in love. That's why I married Jack Off. We'd known each other. Um, six months. She was impetuous. She was like, I need that boner in me right now. Jack Off boner. We'd known each other for just six months, but we spent almost all of our free time together. When he wasn't pooping, though we started out as just friends, as opposed to starting out as just married. Lately, there was a romantic tension that hadn't been there before. Journey to the... oh. Back alley. After working hard on his parents' farm all day... He's a farmer, apparently. He'd take a shower, and a golden shower, and meet me at the cafe near my work. We'd get something to drink, and I'd tell him about work or the latest book I was reading, or a video game he might like. You might like farm sim. I, I work on a farm all day. Why would I want a sim about a farm? I work at a farm. Do you want dishwashing sims? Hey, that would be fun. He would tell me about what was going on on the farm. I loved how he put his whole soul into everything he did. Uh, today I sat and watched the plants grow. Oh, dreamy. And when he said my name, it was if he knew everything about me and loved every bit of it. Uh, what's her name? Her name's not going to be Kelly. I should have called her Smelly. Her name will be, because I like classy names, um, Fartarella. <laughs> I imagine she was born, and the doctor, whoever came in, is like, what's the child's name going to be? And then the mom farted, and the dad's like, that's it! Fartarella. Fartarella, you're incredible. Being with you here is, it's, it's almost perfect. Almost? Ugh. Uh, this little town that was driving me insane in the membrane. Insane, got no brain. Everybody hop on my dick plane. I've lived here my whole life. You want to move? Uh, someday, uh, think about how much of the world there is out there. There's a lot more world than this little alley, you know. Forget the world. There's so much of the universe out there. I could be like my favorite spa- spa- spas man? Uh, I don't even know how to say space man. It's been a long day! Reading's hard! You know, just cause you went to a school in a building and you learned how to read, that doesn't mean it's easy. Yeah, I make it look easy to read in my Let's Plays. But I grew up in a paper bag, and we didn't have books then. I might have been high and remembered things wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see it. Oh, I got something you can see. Oh, yeah, all oh, the universe. The universe. Someday. Someday another comes. That's, I wish I could play that from CCR. Neither of us had enough money to seriously consider moving. I was still paying off my school debts. 
uh, what's your degree? What's your job? And he said his family was lucky to have enough income from the farm to repair their equipment every year. Ah, there you go. Farmers always bitching about how hard, hard life is. I don't know what that is. I think a tooth fell out. But we were made sure to see each other. Even if we didn't have the money to do anything big and exciting yet. <laughs> this is what I'm like when I hang out with people. <laughs> Any of my friends that I really hang out with, the... They'll be like, yay, we're hanging out. And I'm like, oh, man, life is sad and crappy. I'm so emo in my cool shirt. I want a red one. Sometimes he'd invite me over for dinner and cook up some fresh vegetables. Much better than stale ones from the farm. You grew these? Yeah, well, my family and I did anyway. That's what that face said. Do you, do you like them? Do you like my squash? <laughs> of course! I didn't even know asparagus could taste this good! Mm, baby, I'd eat your asparagus. I like to stay healthy with my greens! It's because I, it's, it's grown with love! Oh, that's cute! No, it really is! We find people in love and we chop them up and use them as fertilizer! It's the best fertilizer! Oh, you love your asparagus, do you? Ah, uh, of course I do. How else would I know what it needs? Oh, did he make love to the asparagus as it was growing? Oh, oh, asparagus, you're gonna grow to be big and stocky. Stocky! And does your asparagus love you back? Uh, it sure does. You can taste it in every bite. Mmm, special sauce I made for it. That's the taste of love, huh? Asparagus? Uh, you could kind of say you're eating my love when you eat the asparagus. Uh, that's one kind of love, I guess. There's much better kinds, you know. Look out, Jackoff. Look out. She's trying to get you in a lady trap. <laughs> dude, dude. You are here oblivious being like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I work hard to make my asparagus. And she's like, yes, soon she he will marry me and produce babies. Uh, of course, but some of those other kinds of love are dangerous. I've seen things on the internet that would make you cry. Dangerous? Yeah, you know, like blackberries and their thorns? Shut the fuck up! Blackberries are best berries. They're my favorite berries. Every time I go to the supermarket, the grocery store, you're like, but Super Paul, I didn't tune into this to hear about your grocery story. Shut up and listen! <laughs> I get blackberry jam. I love it. Um... <laughs> Blackberries are so delicious. They're worth the thorns. There used to be blackberry bushes, a bunch of them, over by my old grandma's farmhouse. Um, yeah, I'd go pick those when they were fresh and eat them back in my younger days. You're right. They're so sweet and soft. I like soft things in my mouth. Like your dick? Shut up. They just melt in your mouth. Like your dick? Sh uh, shut up. He came closer for a kiss? Uh, it looks like he's going to go for, in for a butt grab, but I couldn't help blurting out a response. Whoa, whoa, look at where her hand is. That's one hell of a response. Don't forget plump, sour, and just a little bit lumpy. That's the first time anybody called my, um, you know, fun sack, um, sour and lumpy. Lumpy? I, I would never insult a blackberry like that. I love them just the way they are. And, that's right, blackberries are best berries. And? And I love you just the way you are. His face neared mine, and I decided this wasn't the time for more jokes. I had a great one about a clown who gets stuck in a combine, but now isn't the time. I love you, Jack Off. <laughs> You and your silly asparagus, and your blackberries. What about white berries? And everything. What about Native American berries? A few days later, Jackoff came up to my work. I had a hard time with that sentence. Where do I work? Let's see, the elementary school, the car repair shop, the hospital, or the hardware store. Um, damn it. Uh, we're gonna make her be a me we're gonna make her be a mechanic. What the hell? Oh, apparently the mouse wheel goes forward and backwards. 
<laughs> I bumped it. He came to the car repair shop where I work. Is that a some sort of lathe from the 1900s? Is this that old show on PBS where the guy did the woodworking with the old tools? Is that, that's a fucking wagon wheel, isn't it? What kind of fucking cars are there in your town? His engine wasn't working right. And after I fixed it, he wanted me to show him everything I'd done. Well, that's perfect. Just saying earlier about barely being able to afford repairs. You you don't think I fixed it right, do you? Uh, no, 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 it's not that at all. I, I just spent two days working on it and couldn't figure it out, so I'm really curious what it was. I'm really impressed, actually. Go back to the farm, farm boy. Her and her intellectual ways, she knows machines. You go back and worship your crops. Well, it's something easy to miss. Just take a look at this connection here. As he was leaving, he slipped me a note. Hey there, my fartarella. My dear, dear fartarella. Whenever the sweet gas passes my ass, I think of your name. I've been thinking a lot about us lately. How I want to be with you all the time. Yeah, how I keep thinking about you even when I'm up to my knees in manure. Was that romantic or what, baby? Somehow that is romantic. Even when he's standing in horse poo, he's thinking of me. Baby, you're my horse poo. How I can't imagine uh, how a woman could be more perfect than you. Maybe if they had laser arms somehow. I don't know. If he thinks I'm perfect, he's delusional. Yeah, I agree. How, uh, how it's time we said goodbye to this little town and started something new on our own? Like a pyramid scheme? How I love you, heart, body, and soul every minute of the day? I do not believe this. That's bullshit. If someone wrote me that, I'd be like, that's not true. Remember when we had that fight three days ago? And they'd be like, you're ruining the romance of it. I'm like, no. You tried to eat my Skittles. You were being a whore bag. <laughs> this is why I'm not dating anyone. <laughs> anyway, or no one's dating me. Anyway, I want to tell you more in person. So come to my folks tonight for a barbecue, okay? Right after work. Love your jack off. Whoa. Wow. Maybe it's hot when she does. I wonder what's up. He sounds so serious. After work, I changed. And went to the barbecue at his parents' house. We all pitched in to make dinner. Afterwards, when I offered to help with the dishes, his parents told me to shut the fuck up and relax outside. So we sat on the porch swing and watched the stars come out. Uh, what are you thinking about? Fernarella, have you ever thought about what's out there? Yeah, there's like a bush and a fence and a path. No, no, no. Uh, but, but like out where? Uh, in space, so many stars, so many worlds. Did you know they are sending colonists to Dalam? That's the garden planet they found, right? Yeah, it's only about four light years away from here. People could breathe there. Well, people can breathe here. They can grow things and live there. Uh, I thought... Why? Yeah. Theoretically, but why would they want to? What a challenge! It'd be different! Different animals, plants, even different seasons! Actually, that's kind of how I am when it comes to Mars. When I get talking about Mars, I'm like, It'd be so freaking cool, man! Why are you so interested in this planet all of a sudden? I'm going there, Fartarella, to Talam. <laughs> really? I didn't know you were an astronaut, Jackoff. Ah, why'd you laugh at his dreams? What an asshole! Should have been Asarella. You're serious, aren't you? He he mentioned before about space. Don't you listen? Uh, they need farmers to start the colony. I want to go. Don't they have robots that can do that in the future? It's a chance to leave this world behind and focus on the things that really matter in life, like making asparagus for f people on another planet. And you you know my parents are getting older. Farming on Talam will pay enough that I can help my folks retire. Um... I want you to come with me. Uh... 
As my wife, your great mechanic will need those there. It's a good thing I made uh, her a mechanic, huh? Uh, she's going to be worried. She's not super excited about this. I felt worried. Jack off, I love you, but are you sure you want to go to an entirely new planet? So many things could go wrong. I'm sure they will, Farnarella, but I know it'll be worth it. Kind of like when the Mayflower came to the New World and like half the people died. Well, let's just not be that half. And when things do go wrong, I want you by my side and we have to eat the other colonists because I didn't grow enough asparagus. Jack off, Jack off, I would love to create a new life together, even if it is on a different planet. Aw, and so we got married. Gonna make a baby. My mother cried like a bitch. She knew we were going to space, and I was going to get space herpes, and she would probably never see me again, or any grandkids. They don't have space Skype? My father... Um... I'm just assuming that her father showed up. No, he didn't come. He's too busy drinking booze at home. Didn't even come. He'd never been there for me before. I wasn't sure why I thought my own wedding would make a difference to him. I hate you, Daddy. Be good, now she's got daddy issues. She'll never leave us. My mind was so full of thoughts of the future, I almost didn't notice it when it was my turn to say I do. I felt like a dream. I thought there was a walrus trying to eat me. You could tell from the wedding presents that people were thinking about how we'd never see Earth again. We got a lot of jerky and a lot of survival gear, but we couldn't bring most of it and s stay under the baggage quota for the colony ship. Well, that's a shame. My favorite gift was... Oh. Okay, the romantic choice is the locket with Jack Off's picture. Mom's recipe book would probably be good for the trip. Or the music player. The one I automatically saw and I'm like, I love this, is a Swiss Army knife. Because one of the best birthday presents I ever got was when I was a teenager and my mom got me a Swiss Army knife. I still have it. I still use it. Like, decades later. I love that thing. The Swiss Army knife, it had so many gadgets on it, it could practically bake bread. We couldn't take a lot with us, so I thought all its little tools would be handy. Are you ready to go in Blackberry? Whoa, that's racist. <laughs> Blackberry? Yeah, because you got a lot of thorns. Uh, don't you like it? I thought it was cute. Yeah, I like Blackberries. He should call me Blackberry, because... I'm the motherfucking best berry. You married me. You can call me Blackberry. That's cute. Alrighty, then you're my Blackberry. I'm gonna text people via you. Blackberry closed down. We're in the distant future. Everything's owned by Apple now. A lot of things. I realized I didn't have a name for him. I, I thought fast and decided to call him... Can I call him something else? Call him Asperger? <laughs> Um, I'm going to have her call him Stinky Balls. And you're my Stinky Balls. What? You're calling me Stinky Balls? That's not romantic. Well, okay. You can call me whatever you want as long as you come with me on the shuttle today. What a honeymoon. On board a cramped space shuttle with 200 other people for a month. Of course, back on Earth, four years had passed since we were traveling so close to the speed of light. We spent a lot of it talking about the future. Who we were going to eat first of the other colonists. So, um, Blackberry, uh, what do you think about having kids? In general, or us specifically? How did you get married and this didn't come up ahead of time? Right now, if you're a man or a woman and you're in a serious relationship, or if you're two men or you're two women... The, cho the discussion about having offspring is a certainly one you should probably have prior to getting married. Sometimes it happens either way, so. You and me becoming parents. Parents. What's a parent? Is that like two nints? I don't even know. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? I could put my baby batter in your vagina hole. Um, what should I say? No, she's going to be baby crazy. That don't sound crazy at all. We're both adults. We know we can provide a good home. What more is there to wait for? No, don't make them now. You're right. I think you'd be a great mom. You got, like, boobs and stuff. Moms have those. 
and you got smelly hair. And well, I probably wouldn't mess the kids up too much. I might slap them for a while. I don't know. I get bored. You'll be a wonderful father as long as you don't treat the kids the way you treat your horse. What? I was planning on making a little plow that I could hook up to the kids so we could plow the back 40. Hey, and I'm good to Letty. Do they have a horse? No wonder why they were having a hard time paying the bills on the farm. They didn't have like a combine? Too good. You spoil the kids. You'll spoil the kids with treats. Yeah, kids sure do love carrots and sugar cubes. We talked about lots of other things, of course. We talked about what we would miss from Earth. What our families were probably doing right now. Um, we studied what pre-colonization team of scientists had reported so far. Or what they'd reported so far. Even though Tanalan was technically a guardian planet, meaning humans could breathe, and there were plants and animals, it was only superficially like modern Earth. The plants looked similar, but had completely different biologies. I wonder if they'll eat you. And, oh, hopefully there's not... Oh, hopefully they don't violate you. I was thinking of the evil dead. And most of the animals were more like prehistoric amphibians or insects. Oh, great, so a mosquito's gonna come and suck my brain out? Time on Talon would be different, too. Days lasted longer, but a year was only about two-thirds of a year on Earth. The planet was also a lot less protected from its small sun, since it was closer than Earth. The building materials we'd brought along would help protect us from solar flares and radiation, but only if we're inside. Oh, great. Can I go out and play, Mommy? Just make sure you're back before the solar flares. Oh, fuck. You lose track of time watching your TV and your kid's all fried. That's not good. That's why they had to set up a warning system to tell everyone when the solar flare was coming. You know what? That's the kind of thing I should pay attention to, and I probably won't. Time felt strange on the ship, too, though. There was no sunrise or sunset. They did dim the lights for ten hours every night. One night, I came back to our room and found a surprise waiting for me. Alright, everybody. That's where I'm going to end this episode. I wonder what the surprise is. Hopefully she didn't have a kid already. <laughs> surprise, your daddy! Oh, fuck. Alright, I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.